This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strawn and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I'm your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, a lover of travel biscuits, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I am glad to see Top Gun Maverick has made its way to a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> yes, it has. Because Mando was copying Maverick. They definitely were. Uh, I was actually on another podcast where we recorded this, and we actually talked about that as well. So you're, you're not the only one that picked up on that. Uh, also joining us this week, if you're a fan of college football podcasts and college football Twitter, he needs no introduction from the shutdown full cast, Ryan Nanny. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. I was afraid you were going to say, if you're a fan of college football Twitter, make different choices, <laughs> expand your horizons, <laughs> go outside. Any number of things could have followed that. So. Oh, no, we would never, ever ask people to do that. So, uh, If you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast last year, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoy it as we talk about the third episode of the third season of The Mandalorian titled The Convert. If you are new or a regular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of The Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash the main attraction podcast and you can get Patreon only content. You can support us at a three, five, ten, or twenty dollar level. When you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want ad free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get you the show ad free. You can support us as low as the three dollar level, as high as the twenty dollar level. It matters not because you will get the show ad free on the Patreon app. If you can't be a patron though, you can help the show out by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can go over there, leave us a five star rating, and if you have time, Write us a review while you're there on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to interact with the show, you can also send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. Send us a, any questions, comments, just anything you would like to, to interact with us. We would love to have those. So go to your email and email us at mainattractionpod at gmail.com. All right, so we are discussing the third episode of The Mandalorian. Like I said, it's titled The Convert. But before we get into that, since we do have a guest, uh, well, I guess I need to kind of situate this. So I have two Ryans on the podcast, so uh, that doesn't normally happen. Uh, since Ryan is Ryan Nelson is my normal host, I'll refer to him as Ryan number number one, and maybe Ryan Danny, I'll refer to you as Ryan number two. Does that sound, does that sound good to you, everybody? I, I think that's very fitting with it. This is an episode where people lose their names and just get numbers anyway. So it, works. <laughs> it works. So, right. Uh, but Ryan, number two, real quick, just uh, what are your thoughts on Star Wars in general before you watched start watching this, and what has your thoughts been on the Mandalorian ever since? Um, so I am, I am, uh, I, I'm not going to say I'm a ten on the Star Wars scale, but I'm probably an eight. Like watched mm -hmm. it growing up as a kid. Um, I am in that generation where it's like, uh, uh, my first exposure to the original trilogy was like my uncle had it on VHS. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where I watched it. Um, <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so I I don't consume absolutely everything Star Wars oriented, but I am more prone to like it than to not. And okay. I have, with some like small quibbles here and there, I have mostly enjoyed The Mandalorian oh, yeah. so far. Yeah, I think that would be yeah. the case for most of most people. I think it's been a well well liked show. I think most people have really enjoyed it. The people that have watched it, uh, you know. What were your thoughts on Andor? Because that's I think Andor's going to come up quite a bit. Did you watch Andor? So I'm I am mid Andor. I okay. actually oh. I had I was in the middle of Andor and I hadn't started this season of of Mandalorian. I stopped so I could catch all the way up and watch one and two in this. Episode. So so what episode of Andor are you? On? I think uh, I'm through three. If okay. I remember. Oh. Right. Did you watch yeah. the bear? No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no. there's a guy on. There's a guy that coming up in episodes four, five, and six that is in the bear that we okay. have to love. You would not watch the bear. For for context, I have I have a six year old, but more more to the point here, I have a fourteen month old. Oh, so I have like a okay. real recent world. Like, you. have you, you seen this thing from last year? I'm like, no, I sure have. Okay. Hey, that look, makes I, sense. I understand because like Ryan, uh, Ryan number one and I, we when we talked about this, Ryan has seen a lot more stuff than I have, and yeah. a lot of it's because I was. My kids are 10 and 16, and like the only reason why I can do this show now is because they've gotten older. Uh, right. <laughs> because, right. Well, I thought also Spencer Hall saw the bear recently. Yeah. And has been like going on and on. Yeah. And like yeah, yeah. there's a, one of the main characters of the bear is on Andor four through six. So. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. You're, you're going to be excited when you watch okay. it. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get back to it, yes, but I haven't yeah. finished all of it. Yeah, it's, it's really uh, good. Since we, since we mentioned Spencer Hall, I have to ask you a question. Besides the obvious Chewbacca answer, what Star Wars character best represents him? He could be a bit of a Lando, like oh, I like you know, that. he's Spencer for 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 all his disheveledness. Spencer is a very smooth talker I and he, can get himself out of out of trouble with uh, talking more easily than you would think. I don't know; he's definitely not as stylish stylish <laughs> as Lando. Um, so there's a little bit of that to him. That's probably the best comp I have. Yeah, and that's the nice. Let me put this way. That's the nicest comp I have. <laughs> okay, well, that's the nicest compliment you could give most people. Yeah, yeah right? like they were hot solo. I mean, right, comparing right. somebody to Billy Dee Williams, I think most people take that any day of the week. Right. Real yeah, quick, I can right. imagine Spencer seems like he would really like hearing that. Yeah, yeah, because my other answer was going to be Salacious Crumb, but I don't think that's the answer. <laughs> Real quick, makes since, most people feel good. Since we're on this topic, because the shutdown full cast, y'all have what six hosts or something like that on the on the, on the four. Sh- no, four hosts. Four hosts. Yes. Okay. Uh, what's your other two co-hosts? If you were to compare than the Star Wars. Who are you on oh, with? Gosh. Um, I think Holly is definitely Princess Leia. Like yeah. she's she's yeah. got that like fun bristly edge to her. She's not there to put up with a lot of bullshit. Um, but she's not just like a mean person. She's right. got complex yeah. emotions, things like that. And then Jason is probably our Obi Wan Kenobi. Okay. <laughs> and it, that yeah. sort of spans yeah. like whatever space you want. Like it can. It's probably more of like. The Ewan McGregor Obi Wan, um, I think he fits there, and I am C three PO. Okay. I'm just sort of annoying, <laughs> but somewhat <laughs> crucial, and it's unclear. Like, and I and I have limited mobility. Like, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't pick me to win a forty yard dash. Oh, that's fantastic. That actually works. So, all right, let's talk about this episode a little bit. So, do we have to? Yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> we we do. Uh, look. Let me get my personal thoughts on it. Normally, I start off with y'all, but let me kind of start with me. I like what they're trying to do with this. I like what they are attempting to do and what they're trying to. Because eventually, at some point, this show had to be something besides the adventures of Din and Grogu. Uh, it, it had to kind of expand. It, it's, 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 it had to get a little bit broader at some point. I just I have questions about why they're choosing to go down the road that they do at the, here at the beginning of this. Like, the, if you're going to take a, a jaunt with a side character, why are we doing this this Doctor Pershing guy? I, I, that are my big question. But I like what they're trying to do. So uh, overall, I think it's good, and I want to see what they're going to do with this, how they're going to have this play into the rest of the episode and to the rest of the story. So, like I said, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do later on down the road with this because. I'll, look, the reaction to this has been incredibly mixed. Uh, Ryan, uh, Nanny Ryan number two, what are your general thoughts on this specific episode? I, I, I guess if I'm grading it, I give it an incomplete for a lot of the reasons. That's a good way. Sort of I like that. To, yeah, that yeah. Like, this is clearly an episode that is supposed to pay off somewhere later. I don't know where and I don't know how big. And so... I think it will be easier to judge this episode once the whole season is complete and you can sort of say like that paid off really well or I don't think we needed that or maybe something in between where it worked but it didn't need to be as much you know it didn't need to be as focused on these two um, I think just stripped out of if, if this was like a uh, part of a different you know maybe like the marvel animated one one shots mm. and if it was just that i think i would have liked it fine i think i would have been like okay i don't need to like be super invested in this these characters um i i like that this is giving me a look at what the new republic looks like from sort of an insider's view and sort of like a more morally complex view than you might have otherwise assumed um and i think I will say this. I think it did a lot of really good and effective world building in a in one episode. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was it was very uh, concise and efficient from that regard. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, you, you're kind of thinking a lot of the same lines that I'm thinking. Uh, Ryan, number one, which what are your thoughts? So I thought it was bizarre. Like I saw the re like I, I most shows I don't watch the recap. I'll be honest. Like I'm just like I'm not watching. Them. But like this one, I was like. They sneak something in each time. Mm. And when I saw Dr. Pershing and 
uh, Alia Kane, I was like, who is that girl? <laughs> and, and, and they only showed them for like two seconds. Yeah, they did. All they showed her looking around mean, which showed up. We, we saw her same, uh, you know, that image later in the episode. I just thought it was weird because it was a big thing with bo at the beginning and the end. And then their part, really, like, this is the longest episode we've gotten to the show. It is. It is literally the longest episode of The Mandalorian so far. So that was like really that was the weirdest part, and I will be honest. Like I went, I try to watch this episode. I try to watch this episodes twice. The second time watching their part, like when I first started watching, I was like, "This is good," and then I was like, "Man, this really drug on." I don't remember it taking this long. It really takes a while. Yeah. And then the whole time, you can tell she's going to screw him over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not subtle about this at all. So, no, like when those biscuits show up, you're like, "Oh, it's bad for him." Man. He's, <laughs> And he's just going along. Uh, but, like, the one thing I, I can't figure out, so what do you think they're trying to talk about? Because, like, I think part of it may be you hear all these stories about doctors and, like, immigrants from, like, small countries that come here, and we don't let them do anything. Right. Like, like, like they can't do it. Like, they end up working at Starbucks. Right. Or being janitors. And I can't figure out if he's... If Favreau and, and, and Filoni are talking about that, or they're talking about, like, um, I don't know, like, what else they're getting at. I, I thought it was that. I think that, that may be part of it, but honestly, what I think they're trying to do is, what they're trying to do is they're trying to show, because, like, Andor, and you'll see this more when you get into it, Ryan Annie, uh, yeah. that... The, Repu- the the Empire, Andor is so much about, you know, you know, like the bare bones of what the Empire did and how it actually works and how it actually operates. Uh, and they really get into that through episodes uh, four through 12 of that of that show. And they're showing just how kind of incompetent the Empire is, how ruthless they are, but also how incompetent they are because there's a, they screw up quite a bit. They're, they make a lot of dumb decisions. Yeah. I think in this, they are literally trying to show that there's not that much of a difference between the Empire and the Republic. Because even yeah. even after we have the little TED Talk that Dr. Pershing does here uh, at the beginning, you know, he goes out and you have all these dignitaries that are out there talking to him. And one of them even literally says, Empire, Republic, I can't tell the difference. Uh, and yeah. I think, and you know, you get that they're basically mind-torturing the Doctor at the end. Uh, and like I said, and, I, and he says, oh, no, we're not the Empire. We're just going to give you a light little buzz. Uh, and like I said, the I think that is really what they're really trying to show here. They're also, I think, trying to show us that there is somebody, and I think it's going to end up being Moff Gideon, uh, who is kind of pulling the strings on this Lyra King character. So I think that's kind of what what they're uh, hinting at is that that's kind of the point of this episode. But what were your thoughts, Ryan, uh, Ryan number two? I I think that was the vibe I was getting as well. Um, what I was I, I I think I was a little thrown because. I agree that it was very telegraphed that she was going to screw him over, but I thought she was trying to manipulate him because his research was going to be important to her. Maybe maybe on behalf of Moff Gideon or somebody else. And the fact that it kind of short circuit before it gets to that point, I'm like, okay, I guess maybe she's just trying to reinforce that she's either trying to reinforce that she's in good, that she's been rehabilitated, Mm-hmm. Or, I guess door number three is she's just a sadist and just <laughs> enjoys like watching this guy get twisted up. Um, yeah. So that it's because I, I I still can't tell, and I'm curious what you think. A lot of this, the first sort of half of it, has to do with like, well, you know, the ethics of scientific, uh, the scientific process, and sort of like. Should you pursue what might be unethical science because you have ethical aims for it? Right. Is specifically in the context of cloning in this episode. Yeah. Is that a red herring, or do you guys feel like, oh, they are laying the foundation for something to come later that is going to be cloning themed or sort of like focused on that science again? Okay, uh, I think here's what they're doing. I think it kind of the, one of the big points of this show is is pointing towards this. One of the things about, uh, real quick, what are your thoughts on the prequels? Brian and I have talked about the prequels and how we hate them, but what are your thoughts on the prequels? Um, I have softened on them over time, but I still don't have any real 
desire to go back and right. watch them with any regular. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where. Yeah, because like I think I think you're a little bit younger than like uh, like I'm 47 and I'm yeah. 44. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, uh, I'm 40. So okay, like, yeah. So yeah. like yeah, yeah, you're right. You're like you said, your uncle gave you the VHS. Right. Like, we right. were like I saw Return of the Jedi in the theater. Yeah. Like, a little kid. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I could see where. Well, the reason. Yeah, you would have been like fired up for the. Oh, I I I remember, the night I went to go see the Phantom Menace, I was so geeked. I have two younger siblings, and my parents decided they were not old enough, so I got to go by myself, <laughs> and I was oh, like, and I I remember walking out of there being like, well, I enjoyed the John Williams score, and I enjoyed the final lightsaber duel, and other than that, a lot of it, I was just like, boy, that was. That was <laughs> well, rough. now we got it. How bad did you rub it into your siblings that you did watch it? <laughs> and did you make it sound like. This George R. Bates is mind blowing. Wait till you guys see. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still played it cool with them, obviously. Uh, yeah. Like I wasn't gonna show any weakness in front of them. <laughs> well, the reason, all right, the reason why I asked that is because, look, I have not seen the animated Clone War series. I have not seen it. I've seen a few episodes. Uh, I've tried watching it, and there's just way too much. I tried going back and catching up on it. There's seven seasons of that thing. I'm, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get get caught up on it. But one of the things that I do know is that the Clone Wars. They have helped make the prequel series much more palatable to people because mm -hmm. a lot of the same weird things that that Anakin does in the prequel trilogy that just don't make any sense when you add in the context of what they what he's doing in the Clone War series it has it's just softened a lot of people up on the prequels because those decisions make much more sense they have more nuance because they have fleshed out that character in a much better way and what i think they are trying to do with this show is they are building us towards kind of the same thing with the sequel trilogies like because the mm. the stupid the stupid thing they do with bringing palpatine back and snoke and all this stuff especially in the rise of skywalker all this has to do with cloning and this type of stuff and i think that is what they're trying to get us to is to understand how this actually works because all of a sudden just out of nowhere in the rise of skywalker skywalker palpatine's back Hey, mm -hmm. here he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they, they, and, they, and this is the period before that, right? Yes, yeah. it is. It's the period before. It's, yeah. it's five. It takes place five years after uh, Return of the Jedi, and this is basically with the little timeline that we got from Favreau. This is like been. It's been like an additional five years as well. So, yeah. I really honestly believe that that is kind of what they're pointing us to. Okay. All right. So. Let's talk about the specifics on the episode. So when I was watching this and like when they flash, when they do the cold open, we get, a, we get a pretty awesome scene. We get, you know, we get Bo-Katan. She's out on, she's kind of nursing. Uh, she's waiting for, for Din to wake back up and you got Grogu sitting there worried over, over his dad. Uh, you get some interesting dialogue. Bo-Katan's awfully shifty, but one of the things I was wondering is like, all right, is Din kind of dumb? Because, like, she, <laughs> she is sitting there saying, did you see anything while we were down there? No, I didn't see anything. Right. Did you see anything alive? Nope, I didn't see anything living. Like, at some point, shouldn't it, like, occur to you that she might have seen something? I maybe should ask some questions. What are your thoughts on it? <laughs> <laughs> right, Nanny, what are you thinking? Yeah, um, I feel like this comes up every now and then where uh, Din sort of, is socially immature in <laughs> certain ways, which I think plays into the character kind of nicely. It does. Um, but yeah, there are the, you can kind of feel like he's getting a little bit uh, emotionally outflanked, maybe. I don't know. But it was, um, yeah, I thought the start of the episode, and we can get into the top gun elements. Yes, <laughs> we're going to get shortly second, here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought the start of the episode was really good. Well, he's also pretty dumb because she's putting out the vibes that she's there, like, <laughs> hey, you know, maybe we could have dinner later if you take <laughs> off the mask. And he's like, you know, like, you've seen her without her mask on, Dan. She's pretty hot. You know, yep. what are you doing, yep. man? Yep. yep. All, all right. Yep. Speaking of that, I mean, she even says at one point, all right, you're ordained. So can we leave now? She's like ready to be done right, with this right, whole thing. Right, right. Also, another thing about this. So now uh, this kind of exists to the end. Is is did Katie Sackoff go to the creators and say, "I want the the Pedro Pascal treatment. I want to be able to just phone in my 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 dialogue, so I don't have to take my 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 head gear off at any point." Anybody any thoughts on that from yeah. either of you? It's a pretty good deal because because <laughs> I think 
I think the only maybe I'm getting this wrong. The most of the time that she's been on camera without her helmet on this season, she's been reclining on a throne. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So so far, the in-person stuff has been pretty light. Yeah, it has yeah. been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think, uh, Ryan? Ryan, number one. I think you're right, man. She's like Pascal's getting all this time off, and you know, just has to go to the studio. Come on. Now, I will say she's pretty physical, and you know, in all the other stuff she's right. been in. She probably likes to scrap a little bit. No, so. she probably does. All right. All right. So after we get this little scene that where we get the we get them on her ship. I can't remember the name of the ship, but nevertheless, uh, one of the real interesting thing that I want to touch on before we get to the dog fight when she's trying to convince him, like you said, to go and uh, have dinner, all this type of stuff. When she's like, "I'll invite you up," but but I know you're not going to take that helmet off, all this type of stuff. He says this is the way. She says this is the way. Then Grogu girl something. Was yeah. he trying to say this is the way? You might got thought. That, that, yeah, that was how I read it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I do was, like that. This this whole season is very key on like this is like Grogu as two year old child. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where you're sort of like, what did he yeah, say? Yeah. What did he just say? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, you th- do you think he talks? Because we we both think he talks by the end of the season. Yes, I think he will. Yes. Yeah, I think so. So does he go? Does he do Yoda voice, or or has he got like a kid's voice? And I think it's go- I think it's going to be something distinct at this point because mostly because I think they are really trying very hard to make it clear that this is not Yoda. This is right. like not right, Yoda, true. and so I don't think it'll be like the Frank Ozzy sort of like. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how many millions of dollars do you think they tested, used to test that voice to make sure people like it? <laughs> I mean, so it's the balance. They got to test it, but then they also got to keep the clamps on it. Yeah, they so, right, so, right, you know, right, you got to right. you got to find that right balance where it's adequately tested, but you've also memory wiped everybody <laughs> yeah, who heard yeah. it. You put the mind flare and all those people that they have tested. That's so right. that's there what they got. Nice callback to the mind flare. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we get the dog fight, and here's the thing. I, I, at this point, like we get this like really awesome like yeah. space fighter scene. It was absolutely incredible. It's one of the better ones that we've seen in the show and really in Star Wars in general recently. So I'm pretty pumped at this point. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is going to be awesome. Uh, well, and then it kind of like really changes tone real quickly. Well, but but he, after he legit did Maverick's move, man, where Maverick like goes right down. Well, he's does. He, I, I'm, like I said, I was on a previous another podcast previously to this one. He's done this at least once in every season where he does the so he go saw straight the original up. Top Gun. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think that he. Uh, I think it's just what some of the other people in this podcast pointed out is you know this is this is something that even started with the original Top Gun. It started like there's a scene in the yeah. 1989 Batman where the Batwing flies up and goes into the moon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so they're just yeah. really calling back to some of that stuff. But I thought, like I said, I was pumped up after that scene. Then it went. Well, how excited were you after this this uh, dog fight scene? Uh, Ryan number two. Well, even the like um, the sort of foresty trench that they're doing uh-huh. oh, feels yeah. very yeah, much like did. that. Mm-hmm. That felt very much like uh, Top Gun Maverick as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It felt, and again, maybe maybe there's more to put together here between the two parts. Parts now that I'm just thinking of it from this scene, but it was like. That was a sizable Imperial contingent. That yeah, they it was. Mm-hmm. Both, yeah, yeah, yeah. both that they knocked out, and then the second wave mm-hmm. that comes through, it's like, I feel like these shows specifically, the movies the movies will do like the big dogfight thing, but the shows are much more circumspect about like, all right, right it's like four on one or something right. like that. Right, right. This was like gearing up to be a big, big, uh, a, a big massive battle. Um and yeah, I was pretty pumped for it. I understand their decision to leave, but it did make it very jarring with what happens, you know, sort of like mm-hmm. how quickly we're taken out of this altogether. Yeah. Well, you're on number one. Yeah, I was, uh, I was very fired up. I mean, this was like, anytime he jumps out of a, uh, and, and like uses his booster, his jetpack, jet yeah. jet like that's awesome. That's awesome. And I wanted to see these two hook up. I keep bringing this up, you know. <laughs> it, it feels like it's common, like, you know, give it to us. 
And I'll be honest, when, when, when I looked up and I saw Coruscant, I was like, what in the hell is going on? Well, one of the things <laughs> that's interesting about that, I'm glad you mentioned that, because like right before we go to Coruscant, he says something like, because they're trying to get away, he tells Bo-Katan, he says, you know, I know a place we can go yeah. where we can be safe. And then they flash to Coruscant, so I'm thinking, oh, we're getting Din and Grogu on Coruscant. And then... Yeah. They show us Elijah Kane, and like it takes me like ten minutes into the whole Doctor Pershing thing before I realized we're not going back to them, or if we are, it's only going <laughs> right, to be for a right. little bit. Right. How, yeah. how long did it take yeah. both of you to figure that out? Brian, number two, go ahead. Pro- probably, I, I'm, I, I think it was probably um, once we stayed on Doctor Pershing, like for a third scene. I right. think, like once. Once it was sort of like, oh, okay, this is not, we're introducing a character who's going to intersect with them in Coruscant. Right. Uh, he's just going to do his own thing. I think, like, at the very least, by the time they're, um, they're eating light up popsicles, <laughs> that was the moment where I was like, oh, we're not going back to the yeah, other uh, for a little yeah. bit. Uh, for me, it was when that girl came on. I was like, oh. Oh, this is what this episode. Also, thought like you mentioned when after the speech he talks to the, uh, what what did you refer to them as? Just the dignitaries. The dignitaries. The dignitaries. I thought we were gonna see yeah. uh, Mon. Uh, what was her husband's name? Perrin, the real like. Perrin, yeah, Perrin. Mon Mothma's husband, Perrin. Mon yeah. Mothma. I, I thought we were gonna see them. Have you met Perrin? Yet? No, he hadn't met Perrin yet. They don't get to the okay. Perrin until episode four, I think. Okay. Yeah. It, it, you will you will feel like you see these dignitaries again because it, it's very sim- they're very similar Andor type characters. Mm-hmm. I, I thought we were going to see one of them, but uh, yeah, it was it was really really weird. And also, it looked more like Blade Runner or Total Recall than it did like Andor to me. Yeah, I didn't get the Total Recall because you had mentioned that in a text to me earlier. I didn't get the Total Recall, but in the other podcast I did earlier today, so I mentioned the the robot driver, uh, like that was a very yeah, Total yeah, yeah. Recall thing. Uh, but yeah, I thought kind of the same thing after hearing and seeing that. I thought that was a pretty good reference on your part. Uh, one of the things I think that's interesting is like you decide. I'm look. I'm all for going down and taking a trip with the side character. Uh, you know. I'm all for them because I think, like I said earlier at the beginning, I think they need to do that to kind of be able to flesh out the story more besides it just because the first two seasons are all about getting Grogu to a Jedi, and they did that. They reunite them in Boba Fett, which Ryan and I have talked to them. That was just really dumb of them to do that, but nevertheless. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah but, did you watch that? Uh, Book of Boba Fett? Yeah. Uh, no, that was one I, I feel like I got bored with that and didn't even yeah. finish it, frankly. Yeah, uh, like... Okay. You, you made the right call. You made the right yeah. call. But there's there yeah. are two really great Mandalorian episodes in that show. So like and like <laughs> <laughs> really seriously, like two great right. Mandalorian episodes. Like when they reunite Grogu, it's great. But like literally Book of Boba Fett episodes five and six, Boba Fett is not in it at all, except for like five okay. seconds. <laughs> all right, I'll go back and watch those then. <laughs> yeah, you can watch those, yeah. Uh but like I said, so I'm all for taking a, a, a trip with a side character. I, I think that's a great idea. But like we've got we got grief cargo we got Carl Weathers sitting over there can we take a side trip with him can we take can we take a side trip with Katie Sackhoff with Bo Katan I mean why would you yeah Bill Burr would be awesome I would love to see him again why are we doing this Doctor I mean that was my question was anybody hankering for a Doctor Pershing episode what about you round number two no no like it was. It was very fortunate that they do the, like, previously on, because yeah. without that, I couldn't have told you... I, I would have had to pull really hard to be like, well, that's <laughs> who these people are, and this is why they're important. Like, it was... It is it's it is asking a lot to set it up with these two um, to carry so much of the episode for... for uh, especially given the way the episode starts. Right. Like, I almost wish that they had just sort of like thrown you into it right away and just been like, we're like, and say, okay, we're going to do the first half on course hunt and it's just going to be this. And then we'll go back to, right, yeah. and, to Din and uh, Bo-Katan. Yeah. Well, you're on number one. So, uh, I remembered him because I went back and watched a couple of episodes of Mandalorian. I watched the first episode, right. which was the biggest one he was on. I watched episodes with her in it, and I still was like, "Okay, well, who is she again?" <laughs> like, you know, and then, like, 
uh, because this is more of a, a bigger role for her. So did you watch The Last of Us? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, interesting enough, another episode three with Pedro Pascal that has nothing to do with, with barely, <laughs> like he's at the beginning of the yeah. end. <laughs> most of the episode he's not in. Like, yeah, that's right. You're not the shows he's in. Yeah, I guess that's what they're doing with Pedro Pascal nowadays. So. We could have used Murray Bartlett. You think that's in his contract? Every episode three, <laughs> I'm only going to be in it yeah. for ten minutes top. Then I'm well, out. I can tell you, if Pedro Pascal is, is uh, doing the, the, the negotiations himself, they are like, of course. Because I can't imagine how smooth he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can't, I want to sit out 45 minutes. Right. right. <laughs> yes. That's fine. Whatever you say, Pedro. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Elia Kane. Uh, this is the person that Dr. Pershing is with throughout the pretty much the entire episode uh she's played by katie o'brien uh i don't know uh ryan nanny if you saw quantum mania did you see it no i haven't seen okay it, no. she is actually in quantum mania as well she plays okay. one of the characters in it uh it's she plays like kind of like this resistance warlord in uh that particular in that in that particular movie yeah real quick uh you don't have as quite as much to do with her i will say this when her character was in the second season of the mandalorian a lot of people were thinking that she might be sabine wren who is a character from the clone wars they thought that maybe she was kind of like playing an undercover sabine wren obviously that is not the case she is has that she's very much loyal to the empire that we from what we see from here do you think that this character, uh, this la- this lady, Katie O'Brien, do you think she can become a star? Do you think that this is a possibility for her? Personally, I think she needs to play side characters or she needs to find like roles for like buff ladies because she could probably kick all of our asses on this show uh, yeah. because she's pretty she's pretty stout. What were your thoughts on on Katie O'Brien, uh, Ryan number two? Um, she is somewhat reminiscent of I'm not going to remember the character's name, but. Um, there's one of the space marines in Aliens yeah. who, mm. who's, who's a woman who's just like tough as nails, like tougher than most of the dudes that she yeah. is mm-hmm. working with. Like there are some similar vibes there. Some of that's like, you know, she has short hair and she's militaristic, whatever. Um, I think she had a good feel of like, this is a really strange pull, but if you, if you gave her like a two or three episode arc on, uh, season three or four of Justified. Oh, and dude, it was just like, like that. You, you just hit like, Ryan's yeah. bells. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I'm in, I'm in. Okay, yes. like that's that's the kind of thing where it's like, do I want her to be the big bad for a whole season? No. Yeah. Am I okay with like watching her go toe to toe for a little bit? Because I think what that implies is that ultimately she gets got she gets she gets betrayed in the same way that she has been betraying right. people. Like that's yeah. where it feels like this will inevitably end. So up. now I've got to ask: Is she working? She's obviously a bad guy. Yeah. Is she with Boyd or against him? So I've got. What do you think? I think she's probably uh, trying to play both sides and ultimately yeah. working against Boyd, but he sees yeah. through it, and right. that's that's where that one goes. Yeah. yeah. When when yeah. Duffy comes in, the yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I'm with you on that. Uh, she, <laughs> You know who else? She, speaking of Blade Runner, you know a little Sean Young. Y'all remember her? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Short hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I, I think there's something for her. She's got an interesting look. You know, she's very intimidating. Like, oh yeah, she stare, is. That brow, you know. I think there's. Uh, she was. She played like the good guy in Ant Man, so yeah. she's got some range. I she think is. she could do something. Yeah. All right, so we got to talk about uh, we got a second episode of is this character really dumb in this because we talked about this uh, earlier in the show. Look, she's not real subtle at all about what she's trying to do here, and no. this doctor is supposed to be like a genius. Like, at what point should the bells be going off that this woman is trying to set me up and betray me? Well, like, would like what do we think about Doctor Pershing after this episode? I think the uh, so I will say this in defense of Doctor Pershing. I think, and I think she recognizes this, he is super isolated. Yeah, Like, he is. all of the scenes that he is having where he's basically doing his parole check-in with the droid. Right, yeah. They really emphasize how how little human contact he's getting and how they're just sort of like, yeah, just go check in, answer these questions, and to go back to, this is more, I guess, like the sequel to Blade Runner, but I kept expecting for the security droid to be, to sort of like, figure out that he was bullshitting or figuring it <laughs> but literally all you yeah. have to do is just answer the question it's a, it's like checking out or yeah. checking off a form um 
And I think she, more than anything, sees that he is so isolated and out of his element that she can prey on him without having to do that much. Yeah. Like he is, It's more that he is easy prey than that she is not very clever, I think. Ultimately is how I came out. On. Okay, I like that. I like that. What about you, Ron? Yeah. I'm going to cut into slack, too, because obviously the man was hungry, and he just wanted some damn biscuits. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the biscuits, okay? <laughs> the food must be terrible there. I know? mean, the, the, when they showed them, because when they start talking about these biscuits, I'm like, these things must be really good. They must they must yeah. look really good. Yeah. And, like, it's packaged shortbread cookies. I mean, are we fans? I, I'm not a huge fan of shortbread cookies. What are your thoughts on shortbread cookies, guys? I, I do like a shortbread do cookie. Do you? Okay. I don't, listen, I don't think if, you know... If I was exiled from Earth and uh, went through a rehabilitation program on some other planet, <laughs> I don't think I'd be like, you know what I miss about Earth? Lorna dudes. That's the <laughs> one thing. <laughs> like, it wouldn't be top of my list. Um, they had a very, like, uh, this is the Little Debbie snack cake. Yeah, they did. Time. They really did. <laughs> <They'll do it. laughs> they did. You know, uh, I, I, I'm not. I'm kind of like them. I'm not going out and buying them. But man, I, you know, they hand me some on the airplane. I'm eating them, and I'm enjoying them. Do, do you think they're going to start selling them at, at Disney World? No, oh, what, absolutely. Let me tell you what yeah. they're going to sell at Disney World because this is my next food thing: the glow up pops. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is what they're yeah, going to be selling at Disney yeah, World. Yeah, that's true. So that's my true. question yeah. is: should they're you really be sold at sex shops as well? Well, okay, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Uh, but real quick, would you, do you think it's really healthy for you to eat something that literally glows? Like that doesn't seem like the, probably the best idea. I'm just throwing now, stuff out there. Think, we're, we're, like you're from the South too, right? Yeah. Like we've eaten fair food guys. I've been eating the <laughs> yeah. I was going to say like, I've eaten, I've eaten pop rocks, man. Like I don't yeah, really, yeah, yeah. at this point, I, I've eaten a corn dog. I'm okay. Yeah. With it, yeah. yeah. I, I have no room to judge. Yeah, like I said, I was just curious. Cause like I said, it, that stuff is literally glowing. That probably, <laughs> I mean, imagine what your poop looks like when after you've gotten done eating oh, one yeah, of those. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, we're about thirty minutes into this thing, and I'm really starting to get bored. I think they really want us to kind of get our attention again with this train scene. And I, it didn't work for me. I was like, okay, we're really giving up our, our moments with Din and, and Grogu for a train scene. Like I said, it just goes on for too long, I think. And then, you know, the betrayal comes. It becomes pretty obvious. I mean, what did, were you ever really engaged with this storyline, either of you? What about you, uh, round number two? The storyline itself, I think, worked for me. But it had too many beats, yeah. and it was too slow in developing. Like, I agree that the train scene is sort of like, this is a scene that we've seen in so, you know, Indiana Jones has a scene like this right, for crying right, out loud. Right. Like, but the point is that it needs a certain amount of tension and payoff, and it really just sort of lacks that. Yeah, it does. In sort of all directions. Yeah. Um, I liked sort of the, the parts of it that were about the parts of the storyline that were about sort of um, the Republic as functional bureaucracy or, right. or dysfunctional bureaucracy. Um, but I think they could have just like, yeah, just sort of like screen wiped to we're inside a defunct star destroyer. We're not, and just say like, okay, keep quiet. We're not supposed <laughs> to be here. Whatever. Like we get right. that you have done right. something, you've crossed the line and just get us to the part where you get the payoff of, she screwed you over. Right. Like, yeah, I I didn't mind it, but the execution was a little um, lacking. Luxu luxurious. <laughs> I guess. That's one way to say it. Yeah. All right, what you? I, yeah, I, I'm with you. I thought it was boring. My my whole thought when they got on the train, I was like, how the hell are you getting back? Yeah, that was the yeah, thing I thought. Yes. I was like, how are we getting yes. back from this? Yeah, yes. and, I, and I I just thought like it was too many beats. Like you, that that's perfect because. You know, like, I understand they had to keep showing that he was getting more annoyed. But, like, how many times did they show him with the with the robot, you know, getting his fitness check or, or whatever you want to call it, and then him in the office being ignored? I, I thought there were too many of those scenes. Yeah. And the train scene seemed to go on forever. It really and like is. I said, when I watched this the second time, man, I, was, I completely zoned out. Like, I was on Twitter, <laughs> probably laughing at one of Ryan's tweets, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Celebrity hot tub, and my, what, probably my favorite Twitter follower. But like, so, like, uh, I was totally sorry. 
Yeah, like I said, so she, they do the portrayal, and we get to the end, and they start to they they're going to put him under the mind flare, and you have a mon calamari, and I'll be real honest, my favorite part of the oh, yeah. entire thing is when he says it was a trap. I was like, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I'm yeah. here for the corny yeah. Star Wars dialogue. Yeah. Give me more <laughs> of that. And that looked like a bass fish more than. The, oh, yeah. the other <laughs> True. Uh, but so they're they're that's a freshwater water mon calamari is what's that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we found that at the Memphis Brett Bass Pro Shop for from that far away <laughs> yeah, from me. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, like I said, so they're they're supposed to be just kind of like gently erasing his mind like the mind like, no i've done it it's great you'll feel great afterwards uh real quick I, the, we then we had the sinister moment where she turns the mind flayer completely up and she starts nibbling on one of those biscuits which makes us assume and they're kind of dropping those hints that she is doing this for the empire so my question to both of you is is she doing this for moff gideon is there is this going to be paid off later on in like ahsoka when we get uh the blue guy i can't remember his name uh admiral thrawn uh what are you thinking who is she working for uh, ryan number two gideon makes sense because he gets he gets brought up in uh, at the beginning mm-hmm at the beginning when they're all sort of like talking about like oh i heard he i heard something he escaped on the way to right. the war crime tribunal right. and she and i think she's the one who says like oh no that's just a rumor or something yeah like i think that. you're right mm-hmm. so so yeah, i think that probably is it i'm also assuming that whoever she's connected to has to be the same imperial figure who sent those tie fighters after yeah, I think so too. Mm-hmm. after them at the beginning and and i'm hoping that will pay off sooner rather than later frankly yeah i hope so too what about you ron yeah i'm going to get in one i love john carlo esposito so i want him back you know for sure but uh, i'm going to get in like you said he was mentioned wasn't he mentioned he was mentioned in like the first episode as well mm-hmm. yeah so he he's been brought mm-hmm. up a couple um, so I, feel, I feel like he's coming back. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought, too. I thought it was probably going to be getting. The only thing I thought was maybe they're trying to set up uh, Admiral Thrawn for Ahsoka when they when they go down that road because you always have to be building in, in these particular universes. So yeah. I thought that was a possibility, but I'm, I'm with both of you. I, I think that's probably going to be getting. That's going to be the, kind of the big reveal, the big bad for uh, this season again as well. All right. After this, we finally get back to Din and Grogu. We finally have them back in our lives, uh, and we get to this plane. I don't remember where they're actually ho- holding up all the Mandalorians, but I love the fact that when we get there, one of the things I like about this show, especially now that they we're getting more of these children of the watch, we get all these great helmets. I mean, there's so much color. Like, I'd love to know what how they determine what their helmet's going to look like. That's something that just fascinates me personally. But. Uh, you know, when they get there, he gives the... He, we get P- Paz Vizsla, who I think, honestly, I think he's kind of like Joey in Friends, who got... Uh, you know, there's this episode of Friends where Joey got, like, uh, word of the day paper, uh, toilet paper, and, like, he... Because he keeps using apostate over and over again. Uh, you are an apostate! You are an apostate! I kind of think that's what he's doing in this, is, like, I've, I've got this word of the day, and I just learned what apostate is. But when they finally get into the cave... Uh, she he proves that he's been in the living waters of Mandalore, but I didn't see this whole you know now Bo Katan now you're redeemed. I mean she is really just like completely like wiping away because the children of the watch blame her for their destruction of their world. Are is she a little too forgiving of Bo Katan? What do you think? I I think. She is trying to be politically savvy, actually. Yeah. I think she sort of recognizes, because I assume she knows everything that, I think it was in episode two that Bo reveals, that, like, she's essentially powerless. Right. She doesn't have this, like, following anymore. And I think she recognizes, like, okay, you still have a useful family name. Right. Um, you are at least um, workable enough that you have helped in and have come with him right. like you, you seem to be somewhat on board with what's going on here and if you can get back on the path as it were you would be a useful member of our group I, it felt very much like a an opportunistic choice rather than a merciful one mm-hmm. yeah I, I'm good with that what are you Ron yeah I, I'm saying yeah I think 
yeah, I think she's trying to see what's out there. All right, you know, so, so that takes us to next. that takes us to the other side of this coin, because Bo-Katan obviously was not looking to be redeemed. That was not something that she really yeah. had in the cards, but kind of by default, because she had to go in and save Din, and she still hasn't taken off her helmet yet. She, by default, according to the Children of the Watch, is redeemed. Do you think she is? I mean, this film, I mean, with her like looking at the Mythosaur skull on the wall, I mean, they're pretty much setting up like she believes this is a way for her to get troops again. Uh, is there going to be a clash between these two before this thing is over? Maybe. Uh, the way I've interpreted the Mythosaur thing is she is undergoing like a crisis of faith, but yeah. maybe a crisis of lack of faith is the better way to put it right. because mm -hmm. it feels like she is. She has she has rejected so much of the Mandalorian way and Mandalorian religion, as it were. And now that moment in the waters, and then seeing the sort of symbol of the Mythosaur uh, skull, you can see the gears turning. Where mm -hmm. she's sort of like, maybe it wasn't all a bunch of bullshit. Maybe <laughs> this is like, maybe there is something to this life, and I should re-examine the value of it rather than just rejecting. It. Right. Well, you run. Yeah, I think he's right. I think I think I think she's buying into into it a little bit. But no, I think she's one. Her house is gone. No, she has nowhere to go. <laughs> she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. She's kind right. of a. So my question is, if she took off the helmet and if Pedro Pascal, do you think they'd be like, you know, that's good. Both of you just keep them off. We're <laughs> We're gonna change the role. Just you two. I don't, you know. Right. I'm good. I'm good with Dan and Boca Dad keeping the helmet on. I think they would. I really do. Yeah, I, I wouldn't surprise me if they did that. So, all right. Uh, I guess that kind of wraps up our discussion of the episode. But uh, so we do need to rate it. Unless either of y'all have anything else you want to add before we do our ratings. Anybody? No, I think we're good. All right. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we have some awards we'd like to give out. Uh, so let me explain those to you, Ryan, real quick. So we have three awards we give out every week when we're covering an episode of a show. Our first award is called the Tyrion Lannister. It is the MVP for the week. Uh, so I'm going to start off with you, Ryan, Annie. What is Who's your MVP? Who's your Tyrion Lannister of this episode? Oh, man. This is a tough one. And you can do co if you want. Um... I guess I'm going to go with... I think the armorer. I'll go with the armorer. Okay. Like, I think the armorer oh. made... Oh. That that ending is, is really satisfying and really reestablishes that, like, this is a person who is making interesting choices that feel like they have a purpose to them. Okay. That this is not somebody who's easily blindsided or easily duped. Okay, I like that. I'm good with that. What about you, Ryan? I'm going with uh, Omid Abtahi as Dr. Pershing. Because okay. this may be it after he's gotten his Bible. <laughs> and he has made a lot of bad decisions in life because of a woman and food, and I feel him. <laughs> made a lot of bad decisions. <laughs> I love uh, you, brother. Yeah, I, I'm going. I actually went with uh, Katie Sackhoff as Bo Katan. Uh, I thought she put on uh, the flying clinic she put on at the beginning. I thought was really cool. Yeah. I liked the way she's kind of being shifty there at the beginning, and honestly, kind of still being a little shifty there at the end because I don't really know what her true motivation is. Uh, how long she's going to hold on to this belief in the watch? And I, like I said, I am just curious if this is just Katie Sackhoff saying I want the Pedro Pascal treatment. I just want to be able to call my lines in. So, uh, like and I said, how, how lucky is she? And really the show that she was the voice of you know the cartoon yeah it worked out perfectly it worked out perfectly for him in that regard so it was it was very satisfying when din had to basically be like hey maybe don't fight 40 imperial <laughs> fighters by herself because yeah. she was ready she, she was, was ready, ready to go, to go. <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, all right. So our second award is the Agatha All Along. It is our best scene of the week. Uh, what's your best scene from this week? Hmm. For me, it's an I, easy one. Uh, well, I want to hear yours then. Okay, mine is the dog fight. The, that dog fight yeah, scene. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Dog fight. Yeah. Um, I I will say I didn't I did enjoy the turning up the mind flare. Eating that was good. The, yeah. the biscuit. The biscuit. Like. <laughs> It's sort of basic, but it's basic in a way where it's like, oh, I really, you know, 
it is fun when you have somebody just leaning into evil, just yeah, leaning the, into the James Bond shit. villain. Is, yes, yeah. yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's... these biscuits are delicious. <laughs> right, it's like okay, thank you for eliminating any sort of like Doubt moral ambiguity yeah. about this. They yeah. sh- did they? Now, did they show that was it his biscuits she was eating? That was I think it was. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. It was strongly implied to be. Yeah. 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 All right. The last line, the last award that we have is our best line of the week. It's the "If you come at the king, you best not miss." Uh, the best line. Uh, real quick, what are your? Do you, did any lines stand out to you? Because I have one that stood out to me. I've already mentioned it. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I can't. I, I can't trap. think of another. I can't think of another one. Okay, for me, it out. was it was a trap because, like I said, yeah. I just yeah. laughed so much when I heard that. Like I said, it is it's corny, it's cheesy, but the fact they put it in there, I was I was. The only other it. one you could either consider when when it's armor saying Bogota and you you are redeemed as well. Yeah, that was a good that one. feels like it's going to have you know. Long lasting consequences. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So we also have a rating system. So uh, let me give you tell you what our rating system is, Ryan. So at the top of our list, they are all based on five different shows. We don't do stars. We do we do it based on shows. So at the top of our list okay. is Game of Thrones. Uh, Do you watch Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. What did you think of it? That's a you know that's a mixed question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What did you, you think know, about most of it? For, uh, mo- most most of it I greatly enjoyed. Okay. And the rest I don't need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, next is Lost. Did you ever watch Lost? I've only seen the last episode of Lost. I have but really I know oh. enough about. Yeah, I, I went to a watch party for the for it, and I was like, I've never oh. seen this show. <laughs> And they're like, "Why are you here?" And I was like, "I thought it'd be fun." How <laughs> confused were you? It was it was pretty wild. But the good news is, I didn't I didn't feel wildly more confused than anybody else. I was else about to say we, the rest of us were confused. <laughs> yeah, we were all kind of confused yeah. as well. So yeah, all right. I, I love well Jeff Fahey, who's you know every once in a while he's like, I still don't know what the hell that. <laughs> Like every once in a while, he's interviewed for something and he, he brings that up. Good, good. All right, middle of the road for us is uh, Friends. Obviously, I'm pretty sure you've seen Friends. Thoughts yep. on Friends? Yep. Like it, love it, hate it. Miss kind Friends of Friends is fine. Like and that's I why it's our middle like, of the road. That's the reason yeah, it's our I middle of the road. I don't have any love for it, but you know, if I'm on a plane and and it's one of the only choices, sure, I'll throw it on. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Oddly enough, my ten-year-old daughter, like, she will sit in her room and watch nothing but Friends like all day long if she could. Now, like, interesting. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> so I don't know why she loves it so much, but we want we would like have it on in the background, and she would like be watching it with us, and now she just loves it. So, uh, <laughs> next, uh, our what our two star would be would be Full House. Did you watch Full House growing up? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> That's a pretty good reaction. That's about where we have it. And this last, is where you can apologize to your parents. We do it like a lot for making them watch Full House. You know, I feel like that was more of a we're going to meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah, like, okay. this that is, makes this sense, is like man. Yeah. Ex- acceptable to all all people in this house at this point. Yeah, oh, yeah that makes yeah. sense. All right, and our last, our bottom, our one star rating would be a Baywatch. Obviously, I'm pretty sure you watch Baywatch, but it's <laughs> <laughs> but it's not for the plot, I'm sure. <laughs> so. Right, 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 right. Wait, right. how old were you in the mid '90s? Um, I would have been like 12. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You watch Baywatch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no further comments. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, so like I said, uh, for the third season, after three episodes of watching uh, this, sh- where are you with the Mandalorian? What would you rate it so far? I would, uh, as a series, I think I would probably, I'd probably give it a loss. Okay, like I feel like it, I, even though I've only seen the last episode of Lost, I feel like it has done a lot of really interesting world building. It's got memorable characters. It's got good scenes. Like, mo- it's it's entertaining more often than it's not. It has not done anything enormously frustrating that I can remember. Right. Or if it has, it's been forgivably so. So yeah, I feel comfortable with like. I think it's a loss with the potential to be a Game of Thrones. Okay, Ryan, what are you? We both have been a Game of Thrones, so. I'm back to a. Lo- so I started off with the first episode as a loss after the Bubba Fett. I was like, oh, I don't know. And then, like, the last episode, I felt like we were back to Game of Thrones there. Because I felt like the first two seasons were really good. Like, I was uh-huh. I was excited about Star Wars. Because the last movie of the sequels, like, I hated that movie. Yep. Like, I would Same. never watch it again. Yep. But, like, uh, this this episode makes me go back to a loss. Because I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I just, 
you know, this is the one that makes me kind of scratch my head. Although, I'll give these people, they most of the time, I feel like it's going to pay off. Andor sure. is like that. Andor, there's a couple episodes you're like, I don't know what they're doing, but they always paid it off. So that's, but I'm still going with the loss because I still have a little concern. Yeah, for me, I'm going to leave it as a Game of Thrones because I do, I think this episode does need to be paid off. And I have confidence in Favreau and Filoni that they will find a way to pay this off. So I'm going to keep it there. Uh, I love, I've loved the first two seasons. I really enjoyed the first two episodes of this. This one is easily my least favorite episode of the mandalorian uh oh, yeah. but i'm going to go ahead and keep it as as a series as a whole i'm going to keep it a game of thrones but like i said i if they don't pay this off though it's going to be really really disappointing to say the <laughs> least because uh, yeah. i don't understand if they don't pay this off i'm like what what was the purpose of this at, at all right. so right. like i said i need to see what they're going to do with it all right uh before we head off uh we do like to do recommendations for our listeners uh ryan do you have anything you want to recommend to anybody out there I have to I have to find the name of it because I'm very organized like that. Um, I have been I have been reading this uh, this novel about uh, a, it's based on a true story about witch trials in Norway. Oh really? Um, and uh, in this town called Vardo, and I'm gonna find it now. It's called The Mercies. Okay. is the name of the novel. Um, right. The short version is. There's this small Norwegian town in like the 17th century where all the men go out on Christmas Eve to go fishing. They're all killed at sea. And so it's just a town of like women who think they're all going to die, but they come together, figure out how to survive as a community. And as a result, because of the time that they're living in, everybody assumes it must have been witchcraft and that they killed all their husbands. <laughs> oh, so wow. I haven't, I'm not to the point where the witch trials have started, but. It's coming, and I can feel. It. How it's, old it's, is this? How old is this book? Uh, it's only, I think it's within the last like five years. Okay. Or so. Yeah. How yeah. is this not a series or a movie? It will be. It it yeah. it feels like it one hundred percent will yeah. be like. Oh, Amazon spent eighty million dollars. Right, right, right. Like right. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, Ryan. What about you? So I watched Triangle of Sadness, and uh, it was <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. Have you seen it, Ryan? I will tell you. No, I haven't. Okay. No. okay. <laughs> it, it is a very dark comedy. It's 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 very I think it would have been better, but I'm gonna tell you and it's they show a little of it in the trailer. There is about twenty minutes of vomit and diarrhea. <laughs> on a He's not show. wrong. He's not. <laughs> that uh I, I get motion sickness. I had to leave the room because I was yeah. like, Well, this is too much. I'm getting too much. Okay. Like okay, when they first enough. started when they first started know, that scene, but, I was like, Oh, but it's go it's still going. My god. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's like one lady like it's it's bad it's bad yeah it's bad but it's it's an interesting it is an interesting movie because I saw it a couple of weeks ago so it, I can see why it's getting praised yeah like, like I said it is it's something <laughs> and, and Woody Harrelson is in a some, is a drunk captain for like a little bit like okay like, like maybe 15 20 minutes. he's great so I, I'll nice. recommend that and the other thing uh, I, uh, HBO Max I've never seen the world according to Garp. Uh, oh, okay. Robin Williams, Sean yeah. McCall. Man, that's a fantastic What's movie. it called again? John Irving, the World According to Garp. Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. I have not it's seen it, though. It's yeah, John Irving novel. Yeah. That uh, sounded like it was very hard to make. And, uh, it's really good. It's, uh, it's on HBO Max. So I would recommend that. That's like that's like pretty young Robin Williams, too. If yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Robin it's Williams like in the 70s John or so? It's 82. Yeah, okay. So, like, Robin Williams, John Lithgow, and Glenn Close. Glenn Close's first movie. They're all like early third. Okay, wow. awesome. Yeah, so it's really cool. Nice. All right, so uh, I've got a couple I want to recommend. Uh, I like I said earlier, I was on a, a, pre a previous podcast where I recorded this. One. I've been podcasting since about four o'clock this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, so I've been going for a while. But uh, I was on thirty questions, the Star Lord Star Wars Thirty Questions podcast covering the Mandalorian. So uh, you might want to check that out. They'll probably have that up here re re real soon. I was also on Hero Movie podcast discussing what I'm going to recommend here in a second, which is the new Shazam movie, Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Uh, it's a good movie. It's not great great by any stretch of the imagination uh but it is good i i enjoyed it i thought it was funny it's got a lot of really weird storytelling choices and a lot of it's got some bad writing but in terms of like just being having fun at the movies uh i would recommend it i would not recommend it enough to get nearly locked in the theater which 
happened to me on Friday night. Uh, so like Friday night, uh, I was, here's the thing. We were in, my wife and I uh, and our two kids, we went and visited uh, her parents. They live in Searcy, Arkansas. I don't know if you're how familiar either of you are with Arkansas. It's, it's a duck duck hunting capital of the world. Isn't mm, it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my brother-in-law used to live in El Dorado, Arkansas. I think so it's, I don't know. I think it's close, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. I know it's real close to Heber Springs, and most people know where, okay. where Heber Springs is. But uh, so um, we went to visit them, and I had actually forgotten Shazam was coming out. And I was watching the NCAA tournament on Friday uh, evening or about eight o'clock, and they did a promotion for Shazam. I was like, oh, that's right, that's coming out. My wife and my in laws had already gone to bed. We had a long day. They'd gone to bed. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and go watch, catch the late movie. Well, Cersei, Arkansas is about 15,000 people. And it's not a suburb of anything. It's basically a little small college town. Harding Academy is there. Uh, and okay. there is like, it's basically kind of like Starkville. Y'all both know, know what Starkville is. It's, so it's a big yeah. enough city. It's got, it's got stuff there, but it's not close to anything. So like, that's where people go to like shop and do all that kind of stuff. But this is a really small town movie theater. So I'm sitting there watching it and, if either anybody who's ever watched a superhero movie knows there are post credit scenes and i was the only one that stuck around for the second post credit scene and so the entire theater is empty there's only about 10 or 15 people there to begin with and they all left after the mid credit scene and i'm sitting there waiting for it and they turned the movie theater off they turned the projector off and i thought they didn't turn the lights on i didn't think anything about it because normally when i leave a movie theater even after the late show people are working they're like cleaning up and all this type oh, of stuff yeah. And so I'm sitting there kind of scrolling through my phone just to uh, check the notifications that I missed. So I'm there for about five minutes. The lights still on. When I get out in the lobby, the lights are off. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> and I'm like, what? what? I'm like, what? <laughs> what's going on here? And like, I'm like, turn the flashlight on my phone. I'm like sitting there trying to navigate my way through. And a Apparently, like, they had all left during the movie except for one person just to lock up. And, like, had they not been in the theater, had they not been still in the parking lot, like, start banging on the door, like, let me out, let me out. And <laughs> thankfully, she heard oh me. Oh, my God. And she came and let me out. And she then she decides to ask, was there anybody else in there? I'm like, no, but you might should have checked before you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is it like, is it like you're a like, kid? You're asking me thing? to do your job. I don't know. <laughs> So, like I said, wow. it, it's a good movie, but I wouldn't recommend getting locked in a theater all night. Like, and what would have been worse? Because, like, my mom, not my mom, my mother-in-law, uh, my father-in-law, my wife, they didn't know I left because they were all asleep. So, if I'd been stuck there, they would have had no idea. Like, literally, I posted about it on Facebook and on Twitter uh, when I once I got home. And my wife, when she woke up and she was just checking Facebook, I was still asleep. She's she literally thought I had a mental breakdown because she's like, "Did you go see a movie last night?" <laughs> so uh, see, anyway, see, some part of me I would have been also been alarmed, but some part of me would have been like, "Well, I'm just gonna sleep here and eat sour patch kids." <laughs> I was about to say, "That's Did what you my wife told me." To the candy to see if they locked it up. Like, you know, my wife said that you know you like movies, you could have just turned on some projectors, check, catch another <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. yeah, so that, like I said, I liked it, but that I didn't like it that much. Or something. <laughs> like, I'm out. Screw these nerds watching this bad right. superhero so, movie. I'm so out. go see Shaz the Shazam sequel. Don't see the last showing of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least I'm in a small town theater anyway. Right, so. right. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Ryan, do you want to shout out your, your normal uh, uh, podcast? Sure. Uh, you can listen to me on the Shutdown Fullcast, which is ostensibly a college football podcast, but it sure often it ain't. <laughs> um, so that's the, about as much warning as I'll give you. And other than that, you can find me at Celebrity Hot Tub on Twitter and occasionally on Instagram, although that's mostly just like uh, for – well, nothing really. I don't know. I don't even know why I haven't. Used it. I know I've got one too. I never hardly use it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan, anything else you want to add before we head off? I just want to appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I would echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true. <laughs>